Folks, welcome back to the second half of today's Bible study, current events. Hope you enjoyed this, the DVDs. Uh, that we watched this videos a little bit over time. We want you to watch and see them. To understand that we are living in a matrix. And that this shouldn't shock Christians of all people. We should understand in order to for the beast system to control us, it has to be in a matrix. And mind conditioning... I, I did a, a sermon years ago entitled uh, Battle for the Mind. Whoever controls the mind eventually controls the hearts. You understand that? Whatever your thought processes are, eventually become your belief system. Mm -hmm. And your belief system controls how you live. Is that, that a simple way to look at it? Yeah. What you believe is your religion. Whether it's Buddhism, Hinduism, atheism, Christianity. And Christianity is more than religion, but it's comparing to show that what you believe in your heart, so are you. When you have people convinced long enough and hard enough that there are no, are no, are no moral absolutes, that it feels good doing attitude, mm -hmm. uh, then we can see the result of that that you saw in the Disney cartoons of mind conditioning. Now, this didn't start last week. It started 60, 70 years ago. Probably before then, on a smaller scale, before they had to fill in the door with. As man's technology has grown, so has his control over others. Is that fair, Stephanie Field? That's right. Your producer, is that fair? Mm -hmm. As their ability to, quote, educate our society has grown, so is the mind control techniques. <laughs> is that true? That's why your faith has to, to grow. Well, <laughs> that's why I always want people to get involved with uh, uh, fighting the B system. And I say you better have your faith in increase as does your knowledge. Without the faith, you have no shield. Right. I want to do a lesson today that uh, I hope you listen very carefully. Uh, I, I really mean this. Now listen to the, to the title of it. Patient unto salvation. Patient unto salvation. Now this lesson is very important. And I know as soon as I try to teach you, some people say, well, you're teaching works. I am not teaching works for salvation. I'm showing you the warning signs given to us by the scriptures that salvation is not going to shake the preacher's hand and slide into heaven type thing. It doesn't work that way. And I'm so tired of hearing people telling me, well, uh, this was written to the Jews, and this was written to... You know, I'm going to tell you something. You may not realize this. When the law was given, there were no Jews. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. So, how come you to the Jews? They didn't exist back then. You know, Phil Hudoc, you know me for a long time. And you can honestly say that Butch Paul is not the brightest bulb in the house. I won't say that. Uh, but you can say it to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of it is, if I can see it, it's not hidden, is it? No, it isn't hidden it's for people that have eyes to see it. If they want to see it. But Christ speaking in Matthew 24, we're not to the Jews. Oh. Then let's just throw the book away because I can't divide my word. I don't know who's for what. You see what I'm saying? If I, I mean, I don't know who's for what, so why should I worry about it? They got me so confused. I don't know where I'm going to be raptured and die here. But this is for the Jews. This is for me. If, if all this is just for everybody else but me, and only parts of it to me, why should I try to live it at all? I don't know what to do, Bill Blake. It's complicated. Chaos. Because man made it complicated. Yes. It's more complicated than you want to be. When, when man puts his own thoughts into this, he destroys it. It's Matter of fact, man. pardon? He puts his spin in it. Yeah, he does. Paul said that the people wrestled with the scriptures to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. Not a one sin here, including Carol or anybody else in here, has not tried to take the word of God to justify their actions. Is that not true? We tried to twist it? How many, how many in here will confess to that? Denominations, which are heresies, according to Second Peter chapter 2, denominations are heresies. That's in your Bible. Look it up for yourself. Second Peter 2 says heresies. Look up concordance. It means denominations are man-controlled, manipulated, and invented religious uh, theories. On the day of Pentecost, how many Baptists were there? None. Or Methodists? Or Sam the Evans? Nope. No! They were all there, one mind, one accord, one Lord, one Spirit, and nothing to do with being Baptist. Well, if you ain't a Baptist, you ain't saved. Well, if you ain't a Baptist, you're preaching the works of salvation. There was none there! You have to be a heretic to belong to the nomination. I've heard some of that. Oh, yeah. They, they, they would believe that, too. 
But anyway, we're going to look at Matthew 24 and start reading. Christ's own words. Now, this is for the Jews and disregarded. If you believe like I do, it was written for our learning today, you may want to pay attention. Christ speaking. Now, I'll make this point and move on. If this, is only to, if this were only to the Jews, and, and this scripture pertained to them, and them alone, then he wasn't being fair to the Jews. He, did, he, did, he demanded more of them than he does us. You follow what I'm saying? In other words, he held, he hold, held them more accountable than he does us. Now, if I read the scripture, he tells me in Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 10, 25 and on down that he holds us more accountable because we're on this side of the cross. Amen? Right. Through the, through the Holy yes, Spirit. we have the grace of the Holy Spirit given us. Mm -hmm. So either, either, either these people are confused on where I get this from or he was very unfair to, to the Israelites. Now, what Christ said, and I'm going to read to you one verse, and then we're going to go from here. Listen to the scriptures, and remember the, the title, Patient Unto Salvation. Verse 13 in Matthew 24 says what, Phil Hudop? Are you there? You're not no, there. No. Phil Black, what do you got? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Read that again real loud. Please. But, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure to the end? You mean he can't walk up and shake the preacher's hand and slide into heaven and say, I'm okay? Nope. It depends on if that's the last thing you do or not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do. Now, I'm going to show you what he meant here. You have to look and see now. Let's see what he meant by this. What did Christ mean when he said he didn't endure to the end? Let's look, let's look back in the scriptures. Let's start, uh, start reading the verse 4. In, in the same verse chapter. Jesus said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now let me just tell you this real quickly. There's always a dual fulfillment of prophecy. This happened in AD 70. It's going to happen again in the end times. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse or various places. Just as a point of interest, do you know there have been more earthquakes in the last 10 years than all of history combined that we know of? Coincidence, I'm sure. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and kill and kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, I He's talking again here to, of course, the people of Israel. But also, may I ask you this question? Are Christians today all over the world, including America, being persecuted? And do we now see it increasing in this nation we live in? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so if you name the name of Christ as your Savior, you're walking on thin ice today, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Now listen, listen. Now this is important. Now listen to me. He's talking to the church here, too. Oh, we can't help it to the church. Already. Okay. And then shall many be offended. Many so-called Christians will be offended because what they see happening around them, people going to jail for standing for Christ, they'll become afraid, offended. And they will back away from the truth. They don't want to be caught up in this mess. They don't want to be put in jail for their belief system, what they believe. Go along, get along. Exactly. They become offended. They'll run. As the disciples did with Christ, and Christ was taken to prison the rest of that night, what did the disciples do? Run. They ran. They become offended. And she'll betray one another. Oh, that wouldn't happen. And she'll hate one another. You mean even in the church? And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Now pay attention. And because iniquity, that's lawlessness, shall abound the love of many. Those who once loved the Almighty God shall wax cold or grow cold. Have we seen Bob Dittman a falling away of the church in these days? Yes. Are we seeing, do you think, Phil Blake, the falling away of the believers in our lifetime from the, from the true believing Christ, the, the mm -hmm. disciples of Christ? Are we seeing the church fall away from the first yes. love? Yes. He said, because in lawlessness shall abound. Now, let me make a point here. The Methodist Church, the Church of Christ, and others right now are ordaining homosexuals to preach behind the pulpits. Is homosexuality iniquity? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because iniquity shall show abound. It's abomination. 
Because the liquid shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Do I receive it happen? Now, if you're one of the oddballs, Phil Hudock, who says this is wrong, we can't ordain this, we people in this, and I'm a Methodist, and I'm not condone that, guess what you become? Mm -hmm. A round peg when the world's An full outcast. Of, full of, uh, square holes, yeah. So if you're not careful, you'll see that people, maybe I'm wrong, and they're right. Maybe I should take accept this. No, 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 I'm not. I know, yeah. If you go with the masses, you but, know but a lot wrong. of people will. Yeah. If you go with the masses, you know you're wrong. Absolutely, that's true. And you don't see the Methodist Church of the Uprising. In Nettie, West Virginia, the pastor said he would not preach against gays by the, in, in the in Methodist Church. And then he said, I'll not preach against gays. Now they're accepting it. Because the love has waxed cold. And many are turning away and coming out, praise God. But this is why he said this. When he said in verse 13, if you don't let all this affect you, if you endure to the end, you're going to be saved. You follow what I just said? How important is that? Very. Now let's, let's look at uh, Luke chapter 21. Luke 21. And somebody keep me on time here too, please. Now they give me a, a signal what time it is when the clock is going. <laughs> you get to the half hour mark, somebody holler at me. Luke 21. Now, I'm reading straight out, of, straight out of the Bible. This is not what I'm saying is my opinion. My opinion and a dollar might buy a cup of coffee. Didn't really buy that. <laughs> exactly. But my opinion is worth nothing unless the Word of God backs it. An opinion is opinion. The Word of God is the Word of God. Matthew, or Luke chapter 21. Let's look at verse 8. Let's compare it again. Take heed that ye be not deceived. <coughs> Now listen to this, because you repeat the same thing, basically. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and the times draw near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of the wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. In other words, it's not imminent. Are we seeing, in our, today, right now, today, this is, as we live here in 2011, almost 2012, are we seeing nations rise in revolutions? Are we seeing rioting in the streets all over the world? Right. Are we seeing, as Revelation says, turmoil, the seas rising? That's talking about people, the masses rising, and people upset about everything. Now, I'll make a point and move on. The people are not angry over the fact that their governments are evil and killed the babies or sodomizing the children. And they're maybe called the officer pensions. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, Carol did, they're maybe because they destroyed their God. Yeah. The That's their prime motivator. It certainly is. Remember that movie that they live? Mm -hmm. the it shows dollar. a guy with glasses on and see the dollar. This is your God. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. The love, of, the love of money is the root of all evil. That is their God. Now back to here. Then said, then said he unto them, A nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be, there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and unto the prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, I'm going to make a point here, please. As you see the persecution of true believers increase, you see yourself brought before magistrates, judges, rulers. Why did he say this was going to happen in that right verse? Why did he say, well, this is what he said. Why are you going to be arrested? What's the point of it? Look what he said. I will see you brought before rulers and kings for what? My name's sake. For a testimony, my name's sake. I will see you brought before judges and governors and senators, as Paul was, to speak the name of Christ before them, to give account of your hope for your salvation, to teach them the gospel of Christ, even while they persecute you. Now, why is it important? Now, somebody think with me, please. I know today thinking is almost a lost art. But why would the Lord God place you, Phil Hudock, in a place of witness in a heathen house? <coughs> why would he do that? What's he, he doing? He the job he wants me to do. Yes, but, but why is he bringing you before the heathen? I mean, what's the idea of you being there? There could be several things. One is a witness. To a them. witness. Yeah. He, he, he gives, almost, uh, he gives me and the women a chance to hear. Mm -hmm. Even by those who are in prison, he can take a prisoner and have you preach a sermon to the, to the guards. You see what I'm saying? We mustn't fear and tremble over these things. 
If it's his will saying we're going to jail, this is what we're going to do. We're going to jail. Now, when you're in prison, should you keep the faith or lose your patience and turn back? Think of it as an, think of it as an, an opportunity. As, as it, as an an opportunity. opportunity. Absolutely. He'll make it that way. And it says, and it's in verse 13, and it, shall, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts. Not to meditate before what you shall answer. Now listen. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay, I mean contradict, <coughs> nor resist. Now I want to say this humbly before Almighty God and those who are with us. As we, I met the governor and Phil was with me, I believe. I know he was one time. When I explained to him the reasons why we would not take a, bio, a, di a digital number of our face and put on a driver's license. He had no argument against it, did he? What he said. He understood what we said. And he told him to fix it and throw what he did. It wasn't because Butch Paul so wise and it's almighty, you know. <laughs> I spoke conviction and truth of the word. And although he is not a Christian, he saw the reason there. Am I telling the truth? That's right. So Governor Manchin had been testified to. Amen. Is that true? Right. Yep. Now look at this. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks. <coughs> yeah, that proves it, that John uh, Luke was a hillbilly. Kinfolk. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not be a hair of your head perish. In your patience, pay attention, in your patience, in your patience, possess ye your souls. You understand what he just told these people? You endure to the end, you're going to be saved. You mean I just can't go up and say to the preacher, I've been saved and get baptized? Are you stretching and raising your hand? I'm raising my hand. <laughs> What's on your mind, Drew? In verse 20, when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, ye mm -hmm. know that desol desolation thereof is nigh. Is this not also pertaining to today? Yes, it is. It was back then, too. It was right before AD 70 when it was all destroyed. It's all over again. It happened again. It's always a dual fulfillment prophecy. Always. Yep. You know what somebody else make? What's that? Uh, do a takeoff on like a Monopoly game, only make it the, the fake Christian. You know, you have a get out of hell card free. <laughs> you know, yeah, you yeah. can make a good one by taking all the apostasy in the in the uh, so-called uh, mainline Christianity churches and really <laughs> That's good make idea. it obvious. James chapter five. James chapter five. You know, <clears throat> I wish I could sometimes explain what's in my heart better than than I do, I hope the Holy Spirit conveys it because I don't have the words to do it in the right way. I just don't understand sometimes exactly how to get a point across. It's really not complicated, but sometimes I don't have the ability to explain it like I should, but I try. James chapter 5, <clears throat> you need to read the, the verses before this, the verses preceding this, understand what he's saying in this verse we're going to read to you. But it says that the, the rich in the last days, the rich men, shall persecute, prosecute, and control the poor, the, the masses. They'll, 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 they'll monopolize us. They'll own us. They'll control us. They'll take our lands. They'll take our properties. Is this happening? They'll buy themselves. Yeah, that's what's happening. Now listen. And, and, and verse 7, chapter 5 of James. Be patient, therefore, who? Brethren. Unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he sees the early and latter rain. Now listen, this is important. He said, he's talking to the church, be patient until he fulfills his, his duties to bring the, the, the first and the latter rains. In other words, until he gets the harvest ready. When the harvest is ready, he will come. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. This is 2,000 years ago. Establish your hearts in what? In what? In the Word. In the Word. But how do you do that when all we're concerned about is who's playing what's your team tonight? How do we establish up in, in, in our heart, Phil Blake, when we all we're concerned about is your next paycheck? 
What, what's he, how can we get, how can we be so shallow that we don't understand that without his established word in our heart, we had no chance of enduring to the end? We need his word in our hearts to stabilize our personality and what we are. Absolutely. What we avoid. You know that you've all you all know what veneer is. Thin. Thin. It's thin. But what what's the purpose of veneer? What's the purpose? What's underneath? Well, do what? To look good. What's underneath? To, to the high what's underneath. underneath. It looks good, right? Mm -hmm. It looks real. You walk up to the table, and that's solid oak. You take a take a, a knife and scratch it away, God. Veneer. Yes. <laughs> press wood. All you have is press wood. Water makes it fall apart, doesn't it? Yep. A little bit of trial and it's broken. That's why we have to make sure that we're not just veneer. Many plasters say, back in the 1950s, there used to be a restaurant called The Rifleman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had one commercial on him uh, every time they said, he's not a plaster saint. And I, just, I was just a baby, a young boy. I, what's he mean? Now I know. A plaster saint looks real. If you tap it, it breaks. Millions are going to fall away because of what's coming on this earth. They call themselves Christians. It's already happening. Because iniquities abounding, many Christians, quote, call themselves Christians, are going into the world accepting the doctrines of men. Mm -hmm. I talked to a preacher yesterday, didn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, he used to be kind of a family member. Uh, I've never since good about this guy. He is not real. He's been pastoring for years, but he doesn't seem to have any depth to him. None. Any backbone to him. None. No foundation. No, I, I, and he's a kind that if you, if you scratch, I think you see that it's not real on the inside. But as long as everything's smooth, he looks good. But wait till things get bad. Exactly. He's got a stiff noodle for a back. When it gets a little bit wet, it's going to shrivel. <laughs> just, just, just like chipboard. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. You need to read, read Hebrews chapter 5 also. <clears throat> you want to tell Paul's writing about here. Paul is chastening the Hebrews. Paul was angry with the Hebrews because they were given the laws of the Almighty and had no idea who Christ was, nor what the purpose was of him being here. So he's chastening these people and telling them, when you, were, when you were the ones who should be able to teach others, I'm having to teach you all over again. Verse 5 says so, in verse 13, For everyone that uses milk is unskilled from the word of the righteous, but he's a babe. For strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have the sense exercised to discern both good and evil. He's telling the people there, you don't know right from wrong. I'm going to teach you all the basics again. Would you say in today's society the same thing, Phil Hudock? Would you ever thought, Phil Hudock, you have to tell somebody that being a solid makes a sin? No, it's... Is, I mean, is that basic? I mean, I so. Foundation to destroy. I mean, can you go back, Lynn, to, to uh, you're teaching a high school in 12th grade, do you have time to go back and start over the ABCs? Yeah. If they don't have that foundation, how do you teach them advanced? Actually, that's the, oh, that's the exact way that they're destroying education exactly. right now. They, they've, uh, we, we get students that can't, um, they don't know their multiplication, they, they don't know basic grammar, uh, sentence construction, anything. And what do we build on? There's nothing there. There's nothing to build on. Yeah. Uh, Julie, y'all better since coming here before she could come again, Lord Hulkin, we're a little villain. But she told me that day it's against the rules of school to teach children their multiplication tables. It's mm -hmm. against the rules. Uh -huh. It's, yeah, against, they, they it's want, against the rules. They want to get rid of any rote learning. It's all uh, discovery education. She can be fired for teaching yeah. multiplication tables. They, they, going back to, they got to go back to discovering the wheel, you know. Of course, the Indians, how long were they here and they didn't discover the wheel? Right. through? Uh, <laughs> Just tell you what's going on. Would you say this is all planned to dumb us down? Oh, it's, uh, oh yes. They're anyway. Like Indians. Verse 1, chapter 6. How much time have they left? Somebody tell me quick. Uh, 25. Oh, my. Therefore, no, you got 35 minutes, I'm sorry. Therefore, the leaving, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, in other words, you've been born again, you know what salvation is, let us go into, into perfection, that means maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance. After all, you've done, done that. You've done repented once from dead works and faith to the, toward the Almighty. You've, done, you've been born again. Let's move on now. You follow what I'm saying? You've been born now. It's time to grow up. Of doctrines of baptism, laying on the hands, and the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Now, those who have been truly born again know about the, about the resurrection of the dead. They've been taught that one day you're going to be resurrected. You're going to be judged. Eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. For it's impossible for those who, once, who were once enlightened and have a taste of the heavenly gift 
and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of the Lord, of the God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again in repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God be praised, and put him to open shame. Now, how clear is that? <coughs> is that a dire warning? Yes, it is. For the earth was drinked in rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herb and meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. If the so called church of the living God produces thorns, filthiness, lawlessness, what's the end of that church? Burn. Burn. Phil Black, your Bible say the same thing? Sounds all right to me. Sounds all right. How do you produce, this is what he said, not me, if I'm producing evil works, if, if, if my fruit is thorns, what did he say would happen in the end of me? I'll be burning. I can say I love him all I want. Unless I obey him doesn't mean anything. To be loved. Go ahead. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. Yes. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, thus we, though we thus speak. He said, notice, he said, we look for things that accompany salvation. What? Well, I thought I just had to be saved and it's all over with. What do you mean that'd be something accompanying salvation? What should salvation bring forth in our lives? Fruit. fruit. Should it bring forth fruit? First off, did, 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 did John the Baptist not tell the, the Pharisees to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance? No. Let me see your fruit of repentance. Then I'll preach to you salvation. Without repentance, there's no salvation. Without works, there is no salvation. Salvation mm -hmm. produces works where well, you don't have any salvation. Go ahead. Right. Uh, works has nothing to do with justification, mm. but it has a lot to do with salvation. It's proof of salvation. Mm -hmm. By their fruits, ye shall know them. So if I got a pastor marrying two queers, what's that say about him? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work. Now pay attention. He's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. What's he saying? To forget what? Your labor and love. And your work. Mm -hmm. Which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full, to, to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. How do you inherit the promises? Faith through and faith patience. and patience. And love doesn't work. Uh, yeah, always just as good. Through faith and patience. Can I ask a question, everybody in here? How many years have you ever become impatient and say, I'm just going to give up the whole? <laughs> yeah. We all have. When Christ went to the garden field, Blake, and prayed, Father, I don't want to go to the cross. I mean, that's what he said, right? Uh, let this cross pass on me. Yeah, I don't want to go to the cross. Let me out of this if we can, yeah. He didn't want to go to the cross. But his final words there, basically, was what give us hope. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Should we not pray likewise? Amen, yes. we do. But see, so many of us, we run into, uh, we run into a wall. I'm quick. God don't love me. Well, this stuff wouldn't happen to me. Well, did you see that Christ said it to his father when he's in the garden? You don't love me no more? Oh, I'm going to quit. He knew he's going to be whipped. He's going to be beard put on his face. His hair pulled out. He's going to be going to be nailed to a cross. And he said, I'm just going to quit because that ain't fair. I didn't do nothing to deserve this. You ever get feeling like we're a bunch of babies? Let's go a little further. For when God made promises to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiply I will multiply thee. And so after he had patience, now listen, so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Who? Abraham. He patiently endured, and then obtained the promise. He's, I don't know. Is, is this rocket science? Is, is everybody still with me? I don't even understand E equals MC squared. I know it's a fact, but I don't even know what I mean. So that's not a rocket science to me. 
For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. In other words, men who make an oath, that settles it, it's done. If I tell Phil Hudock, Phil Hudock, and I shake a hand on a deal, Phil Hudock, guess what? It's finished. That's right. We don't need, we don't need anything more than that. We got it. Right? That's right. For wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the areas of promise the, the immutable, uh, immu immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. In other words, he made an oath by his own name. You think you'll keep it? Word is your bond. Certainly Lord. God's word is his bond. Absolutely. That by two immutable things in which it was, it was impossible for, him, for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for, for, refuge, for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth unto them that, uh, that within the veil. In other words, we have a hope that can't be taken away from us. It's there, it's real, it's ours. But we have to stay faithful and endure to what's ahead of us. And I won't have to move a little further. Get running around time so quickly. Let me make a point here. I don't want to confuse you with this, but I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. Our our God, Yahweh God, has a perfect will for man. His perfect will for Adam and Eve was that they would never sin. You understand? Yes. That was his perfect will. Perfect will, uh, by will bend in America, will stay the godly nation. That's his perfect will. But because man is not capable of doing God's perfect will, he has a sovereign will, which guides the affairs of man, no matter how good or evil we call it, into his final outcome. You follow what you said? Christ came to earth a perfect man, did he not? Amen. He went through his life fulfilling his father's will. And through the good part we'll say, where he did miracles, raised the dead, and healed the sick, Right up to the cross, what we call the bad part, his father was in charge, wasn't he? And then he guides Christ's life right down to where he wanted him to be. Did he not? Yep. Do you think he's not capable of doing the same thing for us? Yes, he is. If by faith and endurance we let him lead our life through the, quote, good and the bad, if we let him lead, he will bring it ultimately to his conclusion for our lives, for his glory and our good. Romans 8, 28. Comments? Good teaching, ain't it? Now let's go to Daniel chapter 7. I'm going to try to hurry through as quick as I can. Daniel chapter 7. Speaking about the end times that we live in right now. Phil Hudock, look up Romans 8, 28 while you're waiting to finish it. What is it, Romans? Romans 8, yeah. <clears throat> Nick, look up Revelation 13, if you don't mind. Jennifer, look up Revelation 14. Now, Romans, or Daniel chapter 7. Listen to what he warns about in the last days. Daniel saw visions of the last days that were sealed up to the last days, right? Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 says this. Talk about the beast and the beast system. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. And shall be given into his hand to the times and times and dividing the time. He said he will seek to wear out the saints. That word wear, look up concordance, actually means what it says. You're going to try to wear them down. You're going to try to discourage them. You're going to try to change the laws of God in the minds of them that call themselves Christians. He is. He has. And how many people have you saw in your life, folks, who because of tribulation and trials fell back on the Lord? The parable of the sower. He planted good seed and good ground. It sprang up. He received it happily with no roots. What happened? It died. It died. So we see here that we're warned that the beast system, that what we're seeing happening in the world today is going to try to wear you down to where you give in. Comments? Romans 8, 28, if you'll read that for us real slow. Every word, real loud. I'm good at reading slow. Okay. <laughs> That's why I wrote it slow. And the emphasis will be mine. Okay. <clears throat> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. 
Let's just say he uh, slides home That's good news. Yeah, that's good news. <laughs> that's good news. And he, it we it must means be. that uh, uh, he's in control, and and all we have to do uh, is allow him to use whatever happens in our lives to glorify him, to take it all in, in stride and realize that he's in control, and he'll bring us to where he wants us Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. The key thing being there, being part of the call, according to his purpose. Not according to what we think is right and wrong. How many of y'all reckon maybe there are times that we make mistakes? <laughs> You're a liar. Please say otherwise. So, Sambo, once we, once we know that we're part of the call, that means that we've been truly born again and become part of his people, according to his will to live our lives, then all things work to our good. Now, Carol, either, either God's a liar or that's the truth. God's not a liar. Exactly right. So, i got to ask this, and we'll go move on. Patience, to endure to the end, is important. Even though we may not see why these things are happening to me, there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 13. Who has that one? I forgot. I okay, Dick, you would read verse 10. <clears throat> He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with his sword must be killed with his sword. He is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. As you watch evil come upon evil and more evil and more evil and more warfare, more swords, more killings, we must be patient. Now, why is that? So who has Revelation 14? I do. Read verse 12, you know that. Listen here, very carefully, folks. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Whoa. The patience is what? The workings of the commandments? <gasps> Bob Bibbon! That's works for salvation. No, it's not. It's saying it's what we are as Christians. Go ahead. That word commandments, if you look it up, means the volume, the Torah. It doesn't just mean ten. It means everything that's spoken in the Torah. Do you understand what we just read here? Our patience brings forth obedience. You understand what you said? You don't keep the commandments without obedience, do you? Do you? No. no. So patience brings forth obedience. Patient under salvation. Time, Sam. Yeah, you got 25 minutes. All right. Or no, John. How much? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. You quit confusing me. <laughs> John chapter 16. <laughs> you do that on purpose, folks. John 16. I got plenty of time to finish this up. That was a rush. John 16. Christ is speaking here again to the disciples and all of us today. Of course, John was just written to the Jews, right? No. No. Oh, I mean it means us too. Okay. John chapter 16, verse 31. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, and is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and it shall be leave me alone, and, I, and, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. What, what's, what's he foretelling right there? They're going to scatter like sheep. He's going to be crucified and y'all believe me. So he said, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. Now let's stop for a minute. Whoa. Can I ask you a serious question? Will y'all be honest with me? How many of you from time to time have lost peace in your hearts and minds? <laughs> How many have lost peace yeah. in trials and, temp and temptations and tribulations? How many have lost peace and decided... Uh, and, and, and turn into actual heat and cursing, swearing, and cussing, and everything. How many of you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I cuss and swear, but I sure cried a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Said that, he said that in me you'll have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. How many ever had tribulation? Mm -hmm. How many ever had pity parties over? 
Yep. Oh, oh man, we all have, haven't we? You know, I've had both experiences, <coughs> both uh, losing patience and keeping having having peace and patience in unusual situations. The only thing that keeps me steadfast, and I'm telling you God's truth, He knows this. It, knowing what I know, if I didn't have Christ as my anchor and my and my peace, I probably would get drunk, I'm trying to hide from what's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. I try to hide in the world's ways. I really would. Says now, place my sin. But be of good cheer, he said. I've overcome the world. <clears throat> Why should I give us hope, Vic? Why, when Christ said, don't worry about it, I've overcome the world. Why should I give us hope? Well, he overcome it. He was a man just like us. He was, and why did he die? And why did he raise and resurrect? To give us hope. So he can give us hope. You know, we'll have better things ahead. Bob, you ever look in the mirror at that guy in the mirror and think, who is that old man? Over the years, saw yourself sort of maturing? <laughs> 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 So anyway, and you wonder, you know, Bob, in your heart that our days are getting shorter on this earth. Yeah. Right? But is the hope of salvation and eternal life, isn't that beautiful in your soul? Yes. Isn't that what keeps you going? I look forward to <laughs> being with my Savior for eternity, with my bride by my side. Amen. You're right. Revelation 13. Verse 13, so will be. I know that. Just to make sure we're the right one. We did verse 10 a while ago. Well, yeah, let's look at verse 15. <coughs> Talking about the beast system and beast powers, end time devils and powers we don't understand yet. L. A. Barzuli, when you in the program next Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll explain this better than I can. But he said he had power to give life into the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should be both speak and cause, cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Does it not say also in verse 7 that the beast was given power to make war with the saints to overcome them? Yep. Is that your Bible? Yep. Now when you face one day perhaps, and maybe we're going to see this. I don't know. I, I don't know. You don't either. But let's say you face one day the death penalty for not receiving the beast in its entirety and finally taking this final mark of, of uh, worshiping him. By the way, that's the final mark of worship. Not just receiving a chip. The final mark is worship. Now listen. If you see that coming, and you know if you don't do it, your children will be, will be without a daddy or mommy. You'll have no way to provide for them because you're going to be dead. How many men and women will back down and say, yep, I'll bow to the image? I taught that not too long ago with but the three human children. Most of them will. But if they just realize if you don't back down, they don't back down, it's a quick and easy clean this way out of here. Oh, yes. You'll have an attorney forever. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you've already won that. Okay, Revelation chapter 12. Let's see. Yeah. Verse 9. Verse 9. Now listen, I just told you in Daniel 7, or Daniel 7.25, that the, that the beast system is going to wear out the saints. We're told in Revelation chapter, chapter 12, so you might want to pay attention to it. This is, what he's, this is what the scriptures say. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that, is, that is, he had but a short time. This is before the, 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 he has the power to crucify and murder the saints. Okay. He says, Satan's coming down. He's coming down with wrath. Now, let me make a point here. There are two wraths given in the end days. Two. Mm -hmm. One's a wrath of the devil upon the church, the true saints. Mm -hmm. We'll see that. Mm -hmm. The wrath of God we will not face if we're his people. You know what I'm saying? We'll but the wrath mark. of Satan we will see. We'll have a mark of Christ. Exactly. We will not be touched. The wrath of Satan. Now how many are already seeing the wrath against Christians? Not, I mean all the world, but here also now, already started. Mm 
Increased. Are we are we are we not fighting here in the state again, Phil? Yeah, it's increased. Any comments so far? Romans chapter five. Well, I think what is Satan is cast out of the second heaven to the first heaven, which is the earth, and and that's when he really begins. Yes. He, you know, he's totally. Uh, he, I mean, he's always been the prince of the air, but he's not going to even have access to the second heaven. He's going to be down here. Down here, first keeping the same. He knows it's coming. I'm sure. Romans chapter five. We're going to try to get this end down here as quick as we can. We got a few more verses to read, and I think we'll wrap it up. But listen, this is important because this is in your Bible. All of us say we want patience. But we're going to find out patience doesn't come but by one way. And it's not pleasant. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. You need to read what therefore is therefore, but there we're read back up and read the rest, rest of the first, first chapter. But therefore, being justified by faith, not by works, I was justified by faith in Christ. Firstly, and continually in his grace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you find peace with the Creator? Through your own works? Through your own maneuvers? Through your own religion? Yeah. Or through Jesus Christ who should beside? How other way can you get to him besides through him? What did Christ say? How many doors are there to the kingdom? One. Anybody tries to enter any other way is a thief, right? Mm -hmm. right? You mean, Phil Blake, that the Baptists can't go because they're Baptists? They can be justified by faith. <laughs> you know, <laughs> by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Where do we stand? In what? Grace. In his grace. grace. What you mean we can't stand in our own might, our own power? And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, not only do we stand in faith and rejoice in that, but not only so, listen, 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 listen. We rejoice in tribulations. We have glory and tribulation. Oh, I hate that part. We have we re, we stand rejoicing in, in the hope of the glory of God, but not only so we re glory in tribulations. I don't like that part, Sam. Can I take it out? I ain't damaging. How many of y'all have had tribulation in your life just the last few little while? Yep. Sure. Husbands and wives, how many of you felt like telling husband and wife I quit, I'm leaving? How many of you ever felt like that? Come on, raise your hands. I mean, there are times it seems like everything rides around you and just tearing you apart inside. Now, I will say this. If you're backslidden on the Lord God Almighty, you're being judged. You better thank Him for that. But if you're walking in righteousness, bet you understand, and you know how, this is for your good. Makes you stronger. And for your edifying. Makes you stronger. It does make you stronger. He said, now, don't only rejoice in the fact that you belong to Him through the, through the grace of Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the fact that you're being tried. Why do you put silver through fire? Through fire. Through fire. you got to transcend the flesh, and that helps you transcend the flesh. It does, doesn't it? What comes out of silver when it's put in fire? All impurities. All in, the dross comes right to the top, doesn't it? You skim off the top. And the idea that, that the, the silversmith knew the silver is pure, but you see reflection in it. Mm -hmm. What does our Father want to see in us? His reflection in us. Right through the fire. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good, isn't it? Now look at this. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patient and the salvation. We must face tribulation to make patience. That's what the book says. And patience experience. Now why, now listen, why is it easier when you mature in Christ, when you start growing in Christ and quit fighting with yourself and the Word and all those around you, you start growing in Christ alone and growing in Him, why is it easier to be a Christian as you grow? You're stronger. You're stronger. You're more knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You've you grow in Christ. You've been eating meat. You, you turn into a man. Oh, you turn into a dog, so to speak. You have more faith. Exactly. It builds all these things. It builds your muscles. Mm -hmm. Okay? It builds your strength. People say, how come, Pastor, but you're not afraid? Why, why, I mean, why don't you just give up sometimes? It's not because of me. It's because of what I know about him. Yep. He, said, he said, I will keep you through all this if you trust me. You may die tomorrow for my, for my cause. But how much greater way to see him than Stephen, who was stoned. And Christ stood and watched him being stoned. 
How much greater way to go see him, Phil Blake, than to walk in as a martyr? And I don't want to go to the glory without battle scars. There's no warrior out there that doesn't have battle scars. Everybody wants testimonial. Exactly. If you're a warrior. I, I'm not going to get in this because I'm not bragging on me. Oh, glory to him. But I have been hit and stoned many times because of my standing against certain issues, including uh, homosexuality. And the, and the people that you thought would stick with you right through it all have backed out on us in the past. You know that. And I've been called all kinds of days because of that. But I also have witnessed a testimony to a man like Robert Merritt who said if I hadn't told the truth, he'd still been living that lifestyle. That's right. You love someone when you tell them the truth, period. Exactly. The tribulation works patience. And patience brings experience. And experience builds your hope. It's the next thing line. Experience builds your hope. It builds your faith. It makes you stronger. So I don't no waver in there as much as you used to. Sometimes, even Marshall wonders why I don't get shook up. Why does she? I guess it comes across like I don't care. I do care, but I refuse to let it control me. Things I see breaks my heart. My own grandchildren are going through a mess right now because of my son's rebellion. I'm just telling the truth. He's back with the Lord, praise God. But the fruit is still being reaped today. And it turned me apart. Just because I don't act like that, I say I don't break down and cry, doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Doesn't mean I'm not praying. But I'm not going to let those things control my emotions, but it'll make me angry and make me bitter. And I will not allow that to happen. Because then it controls me, and I don't want one power controlling me, and that's the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's Amen. good preaching if I do say so myself. Yeah. Pain and Sam. Hey, Mammy Sam, go ahead. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> We got a force out of some of people. Anyway. Worst deletion. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And hope maketh not ashamed. Hope maketh not ashamed. The more of faith we have, the less we're ashamed of Christ. We'll stand, although all hell assail us, we won't back up. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Is that beautiful or what? Is that gorgeous? Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. That way we're wrapping up. About 10 minutes left probably? Mm, 6. All right. We're going to do it. Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, we can do it. Now why would the Lord God let us go through all these problems? And as we get closer to the last days, why would let Satan come down and turn his wrath upon us and just actually kill us physically? Why would he allow that? I just told you that fire purifies. How many of you ever been through a, through a tribulation period and have drew you closer to Christ? Amen. Yeah, up here. There's something else, too. It, you asked why he would do that. He would do that to show talk is cheap. Sure. Is it talk or is it your heart? That's exactly right. Is it inside or is it outside? Right. In Ephesians chapter uh, chapter 5, we've got verse 25. We're going to concentrate on the last part of that verse. It says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he may sanctify, that he may make holy and cleanse it from the washing of the water by the word. How do you get washed? By the water, water of the word. word. Now, folks that don't say washed is not a word, but it is a word. Washed is a word. That's right. Washed is a word. That's right. <laughs> That he, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should be holy and without blemish. What's he doing to us? He's purifying us. Don't give up. Don't become discouraged. You're being purified. One more verse. Hebrews chapter 12. We'll do the whole lesson in Hebrews chapter 12 by itself. Verse 1. Wherefore, I always look up and say, Wherefore, therefore is all about. But here we go. Wherefore, seeing we are, we are also are compassed about with so great a pile of witnesses. Some say those that went on are watching. Some say those that are around us watch. I think it's the ones around us right now. I think the people are watching our lives right now, hoping that Butch Paul will fall flat on his face and do something blatantly wrong so they can save it. And we need a little longer hypocrite. Do people want to do that? Yeah. Justify themselves. Exactly. Having so many kind of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin was to be sent us, and let us run with what? Patience. The race that is set before us. So wait a minute. You mean he's already got a race set before us, already predestined by his will for our lives? There's a race set before us already? There's an there's a obstacle course we've got to face already? Jennifer, is that what I'm saying? It's already set? Hmm. We're to run with patience. This is, not, this is not a sprint. This is an endurance race. Patience can kind of stand back and watch what happens, can it? It can't. It can't. Relax. Yes. Relax. Let Walk, it happen. Run the race in patience. Mm -hmm. Run it with knowing that you're going to make it because he promised you would. You trip, you go over, you go over, you go over a, a obstacle, you go through it, and you come strong on the other side. Like hurdles. Yeah. Exactly. When I was in the military, I went through obstacles a lot. And the more I went through it, the better I got, Bob. The faster I got, the stronger I got. Literally. Now I can run a mile in no time. I can walk across the room. Now I can't walk across the room. But back then, I could run a mile in formation and never, never, get a, never draw a hard breath because I worked at it. Some of been a Christian. And how much time do I left, Sam? I'm watching your clock. Okay. I want to make one point here. This is important. I'm closing with this. Look at verse 12 again. Laying aside every weight. I mean to make this point. The weight, that weight is not, that is not necessarily a sin. But here's one of the weights I see people carrying with them they shouldn't carry. Past guilt. Sins that have been repented of should be forgotten by you as far as feeling guilty about it. Why? You've been forgiven for it. Now pay attention, but is Satan going to bring up her past sins even though they've been washed away from the blood of Christ? Right. Say, look what you did back when you were 16 years old or you were 20 years old. Is he good at that? Oh, yeah. To make you feel low and deep and dirty again? Yep. Well, it's easily done. Look at all the people that think that they, sh they should be uh, suffering because of slavery when we had nothing to do exactly. with it. Exactly. We do it in personal lives. It's, this is a weight that holds us back. When we feel un unnecessary guilt, if you sin, then you should feel guilty. Yeah. Repent of it. But if you feel an unnecessary guilt, that's a weight that holds you down. You cannot run effectively. That's the devil putting burdens it on is. your heart. We are to move on and get rid of those weights. We're running a race. We can't carry them with us. Christ took those sins away from us when we were born again. Let's not pick them up and try to carry them. Forgiveness can't change the past, but it can change the future. Amen. Folks, patience is under salvation. Do not Become hardened in tribulation. Rather, become strengthened through tribulation. If you believe the scripture, if you believe that our God is faithful, and you know what I've taught you is true, be patient with yourselves. You don't trip once in a while. Get up and go on. Be patient with others. Because they're just people too. Help them get up and go on too. But learn to run this race in patience. And you will come to the end of it when our Father says your race is run. See you next time. As I awoke, he'd vanished in the mist from whence he came. His words were true. We are not free, but we have ourselves to blame. For even now as tyrants trample each God-given right, we only watch and tremble, too afraid to stand and fight. If he stood by your bedside in a dream while you were asleep and wondered what remains of the freedoms he'd fought to keep, what would be your answer if he called out from the grave? Is this still the land of the free and home of the brave? God bless you and God bless this republic.